Good arising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, you know, all praise is to the Most High Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the Earthly Mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses this lesson this evening, gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past, in order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Brethren, I'm going to read a little bit from this book right here. <clears throat> Sacred Sites. A Traveler's Guide to North America's Most Powerful Mystical Landmarks. And what we need to do is when we're reading things, we need to read old things that we've already read things that we've learned in college or high school or elementary school, things that we've been told and really kind of reassess many of the things that we've been, you know, taught. Because there's always like, there's many times there's little nuggets that are left there that we didn't understand or we didn't, you know, see the first time that brings much more understanding to different passages and things that we've been read, that we've read or have been taught. I'm gonna read a little bit from here because really what I'm seeing is that it's like this. We need to learn more about what happened over in Britain and Ireland because the enemy doesn't have a history. The enemy does not have a history. So everything that he's done is pretty much just replicating what we did before. And I'm going to probably do a little video about how these people, they don't have a history. They can't think for themselves. They only have uh, what they've been given as far as their spirit is to understand things. They do not admit to things that they've done. They ignore what they've done to us. So their history is very jaded. They came over here and did exactly the same things they did over in the three parts. But the Most High has made them write certain things into their history that earlier when we weren't aware of our British and Irish roots, which is so to say, that those things kind of just fell by the wayside or went right over our heads. Now we, that we realize, yes, we're the 12 tribes of Israel. Yes, we have a spiritual leadership of Levi, the priests. And we have the kingly, you know, order of Judah. And it was talked about in the Testament of the 12, how at the end, you know, the tribes need to rally behind Levi and Judah the spiritual side and the kingly side. But let's just take a real quick look at here and look at what we uh, see as we read a little bit from this book. Hold on here. There we go. The Bighorn Medicine Wheel in Wyoming. I'm sure many of you guys have probably heard about this already. It says, all over the center of the North American continent, from the Mississippi River to the Rockies, from Canada to Texas. The plains are spotted with thousands of circular stone medicine wheels left by the Native Americans who lived and roamed there. And during time and weather, the rings, some of which are more than 5,000 years old, were once all assumed to be and thus labeled teepee rings. Well, then again, that's their, that's their assumptions, but whatever. True stones, okay, were used to hold down the edges of a teepee and left in place when the tribes uh, moved on. But other rings, too large to be dismissed as mere teepee rings, were uh, until recently thought to have been created for uh, council gatherings and worship. And most of them probably were constructed for that purpose. And again, this is this is uh, Esau and the uh, Gentiles trying to tell us what, what these were used for 5,000 years ago. 
when they've only been over here a few hundred years, but they think they're in some kind of you know position to tell you what they were using these for 5,000 years ago. So they can bring the information, but the interpretation is not for them. Because you know the vast majority of the times, their interpretations are totally wrong. One previously unrecognized factor, however, is now receiving a lot of attention and changing how we look at the medicine wheels. Many of them, like Stonehenge, Woodhenge, and Cahokia, okay, Calendar 1 in Vermont, and other pre-Columbian ruins were carefully designed to align with and reflect the movements of certain stars and planets. Now, this is information that they didn't have, remember? So they're not going to be able to tell us how these things work when they weren't even aware of the planets and how they worked. They didn't get that information until they came over here to the fourth part. Or if they did, they had a very elementary understanding of things. Okay. One purpose, perhaps the primary function, seems to have been the prediction of seasonal changes. Whatever else the shamans and medicine men looked for in the stars or in the daylight as the sun and moon rose is as yet unknown. So even up to today, they still don't know what these things are being used for. I mean, I'm sure seasonal changes is pretty elementary even for our people. I mean, they, they, they knew that. So I'm sure there's a lot more, and still, yet to this day, it's unknown. A true cosmic puzzle, the meaning of the medicine wheel, is just beginning to unravel. Seasons or not, alignments or not, medicine wheels are very, are known to Native Americans as very sacred places. Interpreted by astronomer priests. Now we know that would be our Levites, astronomer priests. The ones who knew the seasons and the ones who knew when to uh, commit to do certain things. Surely only the most spiritually and scientifically gifted of the tribe gathered at the medicine wheels. They're based on their based on their magic and observations. They could interpret the starry dances of the sun god, the constellations, various star groups and other celestial friends. In their interpretations lay the fate of the community for one more year. So you're here talking about magic, talking about these uh, these observations. And that's what we're going to be talking about. They're based on their magic and observations. We're going to get into some other books talking about magic. Because that's what was going on. You're going to see, realize that many, remember, these other nations don't have a history. So when they got our history books and they saw the things that were that we were doing, they wanted to make it seem as if, as if it was them that was doing those things. That if they want everybody to believe that it was, you know, the white men and the other Gentiles that were doing these things. So therefore, you know, in order to glorify themselves, they made movies being out in outer space, having these magical powers, you know, in Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. Everybody, all the young kids wanted to be Jedis and have use of the Force growing up. Maybe that's why that was so much of a nostalgia and why that's still been around for such a long time. Dealing with other nations, other planets, aliens, things like that. So these people just got our records and then changed up the story a little bit, and then just interjected themselves into our stories and made movies out of them and made billions of dollars like they came up with all this stuff on their own. Trust me, they're not that creative. Now check this part out right here. The astronomer priest, as much as the military leader of the tribe, so the astronomer priest would be represented by the Levites. The military leader... Judites. Now, before we didn't realize who we are, we wouldn't have made that connection. But now that we know that we were over there in the three parts and we were over here in the fourth part and our people had been together and those were the ones who have been gifted with this knowledge and understanding, that would only make sense that this understanding only comes to the children of the Most High.
It doesn't just come to anyone. So when you're reading things like this, you start to see how, you know, it's talking about us, but in a secret way. So again, the astronomer priest, as much as the military leader of the tribe, was the most important person among many ancient peoples. One cannot help wondering if today's new class of intrepid archaeoastronomers pursuing their um, painstaking work of measuring and surveying ancient sites for their sky connections are merely doing so again, maybe the second or third time around, recovering rather than discovering past knowledge. And that's us. We're the ones that are recovering rather than discovering past knowledge. We are recovering our roots. It's not a discovery. It's a recovery. We are recovering our knowledge and understanding. We're recovering the knowledge and understanding of our lands, of our people. That's what's going on right now. A recovery, not a discovery. And that's what the Most High is doing right now. He's giving us back that knowledge and understanding. So when you're reading certain things, you start to pick out like, oh, that's talking about us. No, no matter how they write it or try to hide it or try to interject themselves, that's all about us. Talking about, you know, in Star Wars, you know, and the Force and the dark side. That was going on also with our people. I'm sure that many of our prophets look like Jedis doing things, you know, on a, on a just a huge scale that looks like magic. Then you have the dark side. You're going to have the other, you know, on the other side, the priest of Mahan. They had dark magic. They could look and make it look like they were doing certain things just like we did. And they would do these kinds of, um, you know, he has kind of competitions in front of people to see who, who would they follow. Are they going to follow the Most High and his chosen people? Or are they going to follow the priest of Mahan? And, see, and for a very long time, the other nations have been able to hide the fact that we had power. And they make it seem as if they're the only ones that have power. And that's why the vast majority of the world follows them. Because they had, they were given the time and the power to put us down and put us into slavery. And the whole world watched and praised the priests of Mahan for doing that. Because then they were able to get their blessing for that time. But now, we're coming back. And the Most High has given us, we are recovering our knowledge and understanding. It's not a discovering. It's not a new thing. It's not a discovery. So you, these wheels, as you can see, when you talk about the first part, the astronomer priest, as much as the military leader of the tribe, was the most important person among many ancient peoples. Okay? And those were the ones I'm sure the, the priest would go. Just, I mean, just look at, look at how, you know, Samuel dealt with Saul. Samuel dealt with David. You can see how, you know, he was guiding them, giving them knowledge, and understanding in, for, in order for them to make decisions. The spiritual world, you know, the spiritual power as well as with the military power, and they were working together. The king was getting knowledge, and understanding and direction from the priests. And now you got the same kind of thing being reflected right here in this book. This is going to be a quick one. I said we're definitely going to be getting into uh, into this one. Well, this book and some other books as well. I'm going to be bringing some other videos shortly. And uh, if anybody has the book, this is a page. This is page pages 97 and 98. Maybe someone has a book and they can see if it has if it says the same thing or if it says something totally different in order to throw us off once again. All praise is to the Most High Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who was wisdom? Who was the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement, Yahweh Shai. Shalom. 